you have entered the Chronics rabbit hole. And Johan, thank you so much for your Patreon membership request. You are bringing back down some epica down the rabbit hole. Thank you so much for the epicans and chronicans on the channel. This song is Serenade of Self-Destruction from the Requiem for the Indifferent album. Thank you so much, Johan. I'm really looking forward to this one. Thank you so much, Johan, for bringing Epica back down the rabbit hole. You let us know that this is one of your favorite songs, and we love this song too. We did hear it during our go through of the retrospect concert so if you guys haven't heard our initial reactions through the retrospect concert definitely go and take a look at that this will be a review of serenade of self-destruction this will be the first time that we're listening to the studio version of this song this does have the lyrics along with it so i'm really excited to be able to have the full exposure to lyrics audio and everything the way that it would be on the album that Epica wanted us to hear it as. So if you guys are as excited as we are to have Epica come back down the rabbit hole, remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more Into the Chronicness. I'm really looking forward to this one with the lyrics too because I don't really pay attention to the lyrics when I'm listening to this from retrospect because the song itself is just so damn badass. I remember when this came on through retrospect how amped i got so i'm very excited to check the studio version out with johan and all the epicans around the world all right you ready hun i'm ready okay that beautiful piano intro
that's a good place to pause a little halfway through. This is incredible. I love hearing the studio version, even though they have the lyrics here. The music is still so damn good that it's I'm fighting, like, looking at the lyrics and just jamming right now. Oh, absolutely. Like, the music is phenomenal. Um, it almost sounds a little bit like... Um, Simona is backtracked onto herself, but when she's yeah. like singing, but then having like a bit of a deeper tone, like a spoken word almost behind some of the lyrics. Yeah. And I've been like trying to listen into that because it's just such a unique piece to when they um backtrack the singer on top of the singer. Yeah, the layering of the vocals. The is layering incredible. of the vocals is incredible. Um Have there you taken are... any lyrics from this? Yeah, I, I love this song. The lyrics of it are amazing. Um, I've definitely been reading through and singing along, right. but I'm not. <laughs> it's so hard to gasp what this yeah. is about. Like serenade of self-destruction might be a little bit like when you're basking in your own self-destruction, your own thoughts are causing you to destroy yourself with, from the within. And you're going to be trapped with all this stuff because we're fools. Right. So like, it's yeah. kind of what I was taking a little bit out I, of it. I feel like this song, like the, the title kind of speaks for itself mm -hmm. with it, with serenade of self-destruction. Like, um, I was a very self-destructive person in my teenage years. So, like, it's very much, like, you keep making the same choices over again where you're just throwing yourself back into that pit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And every time you pull yourself out of that pit or someone throws the rope down or helps you out of that pit, you just trip and fall back into it. Mark says, no. And he's like, no. <laughs> and it's like, why would you do that? And you just keep falling back in. And so you're serenading yourself when that's destructive personality yeah and so like this is it's such a great song i love i actually love singing along to this song from the retrospect yeah. album um when i do listen to epica i make sure i only listen to the versions of the songs that we've already reacted to yeah and um the, this is an amazing amazing piece amazing piece i didn't know it was from this album so that makes me happy because this is old epica there are this badass right off the bat so yeah let's keep it going
to. Love Epica. Love how it oh. fades out. Yeah, that's a perfect fade out. I, I wish every song had that acoustic outro. I think it does so much, but something I was really thinking about. Um, growing up we were in the era of cds right mm -hmm. and we missed epica we missed all these amazing bands um like lincoln park eminem were some of the cds i listened to but you get the whole experience when you listen to an album from start to finish and it becomes a bit more memorable for me like you just remember that moment and for me i really wish i had the ability to listen to epica as it came out especially some of these older ones i love their longer songs that give more time to show their full range of what they're capable of i think isaac was just slaying it on the guitar here like obviously we love this song you guys have seen her first reaction to this but hearing it in the studio version getting to see some of the lyrics more and we uh, i haven't heard this song in a long time so it brought back that oh excitement like even halfway through i was thinking about the parts in the end it's just such a memorable song from start to finish i've heard this song a little bit because it's you know i listen to the retrospect concert concert on spotify while i'm driving yeah and um but i i honestly i've only really listened to the beginning of this one and i didn't re i haven't listened to the end in a long time okay and um i don't know if maybe it's different in the studio versus in the retrospect concert but i don't remember there being that spoken word part oh. where they were talking about um it was almost like newsreels were yeah. playing yeah so before i before the last breakdown before the last breakdown right so i don't remember that from the actual concert piece okay. and maybe that's just i missed it or what have you right um one second you know. <laughs> um Sorry, baby was making some noises. <laughs> the 13 year old baby, baby through the baby monitor. <laughs> baby. <laughs> um, but the sorry. spoken word the, part. The spoken word part, I don't remember that from the retrospect concert. So right. maybe it wasn't in there or maybe I just missed it. But For the sure. ending sounded different to me. There was a lot more to it on this. It was just more backtrack. You could feel the whole yeah. thing they were trying to get out. It wasn't just the acoustic picking at the end. There felt like more. There was more. Yeah. There were little things that I um, just don't remember from the concert being like the the, the, the vocal. The, um, the layering? The, the, the layering with the what well, sounded like newsreels. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Specifically the newsreel aspect. And then going in like you could hear a lot of the backtrack aspects a little bit more like when it sounded like um simona's voice was layered on top of her own voice yeah being a spoken word voice as well as her operatic singing and there were just other bits at the end that um just pulled to me a lot more in this one so i'm not sure if they uh, it was just a longer ending or what have you but it just it definitely sounded different well you got to hone in this time right and yeah. live to studio is a lot different so that's why um johan you were mentioning like yeah it's badass obviously live at the retrospect but um the studio version shows the full um song they wanted to put yeah. out right from the beginning and like right off the bat you can hear more layers and even when she sings at the very beginning for serenade of self-destruction mm -hmm. i you never really hear the back vocals in that live version compared yeah. to her singing that beginning part so many things stood out to me differently the choir was a lot more prominent, prominent. in yes. this one right? and being able to hear what they were saying and how the how they the choir had its own play between yeah. the um, the bassist and the sopranos and how they were going through with that. So there was a lot more, I, I guess the best word is there was a lot more play in the studio version that you can hear coming out yeah, yeah. on all sides that you don't necessarily hear in the live version. Yeah, and like I said, when this one came on, like I was so excited for this request because I was looking forward to the studio version to hear the, all the intricacies, to see some of the lyrics, to actually understand it a bit better. So there's a bit more clearness to what this is. That it's kind of in the same spirit of what Epica always talks about. 
but Mark's performance on this is just so epic too. Know. I think they're flying on all colors. This might be my favorite song from the Rec Room for the Indifferent mm -hmm. album. I mean, it's hard to top this one and it's incredible. So thank you so much, Johan, for bringing it back to us. It's quite the treat for me to start my day out with Epica anytime, Epicans, Chronicans. I'm sure you guys had a good time with us. You can let us know in the comments below if you want us to finish off this uh, um, album in its entirety because we're starting to get close to that. Or if you just want us to check out another epic of the song, you can let us know in the comments as well. Hit that like button if you had a good time. But we are exiting the rabbit hole now, folks. Thank you guys so much for being here. And thank you, Johan, for bringing this album back down the rabbit hole. Because the moment we finish this album, I can add it to my Spotify so I can have more songs to listen to. Yeah. Peace and love, everyone. God bless y'all. Take care and bye for now. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Enter the Chronicness. Special thanks to all of our YouTube, Patreon, and Buy Me A Coffee members. Thank you for all of your support.